Last fall, I had an experience of a lifetime. And I want to take you on that journey. So awesome. Let's go. Elk are considered one of the hardest big game animals to hunt. They can smell up to 600 times better than humans and travel over a dozen miles a day. So it's safe to say they're not the easiest animals to get close to. And they don't show themselves often. The best time to spot one is early in the morning or late in the evening. But we do have a few advantages on our side. Because we're hunting during the fall, the bulls tend to drop their guard a little bit. And this is because they're worried about the ladies. And they're not too quiet about it. This is Lynn. And when it comes to hunting elk, I think of him as the greatest of all time. He planned on guiding a few elk hunts, and lucky for me, he was in need of some mule power. He had big bulls scouted out in an area that wasn't accessible by vehicles. The best way into the roadless was either hiking or riding horses. And why walk when Old Red is willing to pack in camp? Yeah. All right, got the pack mule. Gonna load her up with all this gear right here. We've already taken a couple loads up there, so this one's actually pretty small compared to the other ones. All right, we got the donkey loaded up. We don't want any rodeos today because we got an expensive drone in there, a nice spotting scope, all of our gear. But she'll do good for us. Won't you, Red? Brody, are you the only one walking today? I'm the only one faster than a horse. <laughs> you might want to get a video of me with my cute butt and my cute sticks walking up this hill. <laughs> We got the pack mule loaded up. Hunters are ready to go. Yes, sir. We're gonna hop on, get up the hill. Escape civilization for a couple of days, huh? So far, so good. We're about to gain some serious elevation here. We just showed up to camp and we can hear elk bugling everywhere. So cool, this is so awesome. <laughs> Where's Tristan? He's halfway down there, he's not in very good shape. <laughs> Zach said you had a hard time making it up the hill. <laughs> I don't listen to him, I beat him by a long way. Let's see that shirt. It started raining on the way up. Just happy I had a mule for a horse, I guess. Tristan, what's going on? We can hear some elk like right over this little hill. That evening, we watched elk cross over the ridge next to us. And some of the horses didn't like how close they got. Shut up, horse. I didn't sleep well that night because the sounds of bull elk next to camp fueled my anticipation for the morning hunt. But the sleepless night was worth it because the next morning did not disappoint. What do you gotta tell the viewers this morning? Dude, we're surrounded by elk. They're just going crazy and it's awesome. What, it's like 6.50? And we got Mountain Dew. After glassing up a handful of small bulls, we finally found one worth taking a closer look at.
This is a nice looking bull. But Lynn had previously scouted a few bigger bulls in the area, so we decided to pass on this one. Well, it's raining on us. It's a little bit cold up here, but we're surviving. We're hunkered down under a tree, and we're waiting for a big bull to walk out. Eventually, a wall of fog hit us, and the weather was about to get a lot worse. So we rushed back to camp to take shelter. coming through the tent. It's coming down that hard. It's not bad, bro. It's that heavy one. Heavy one. Mm, from last night and this morning. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Bro, he's checking out some milk oh. over here. <laughs> Y'all, <Yeah>, baby. <laughs> oh, did you see that? Oh, <laughs> The morning hunt went awesome. Most of the afternoon we were trapped inside the tent because it was raining. Let's get back out there and find ourselves a big old bull. So we see a big bull over here and the hunters are walking around to shoot it and we're just watching it to make sure it stays in the same spot. So hopefully if everything goes right we'll be uh, packing out a big bull either tonight or in the morning. Still, just stop looking over at you, Lynn. Dang, he looks big right there. The hunters hiked down the canyon to get in firing range of the bull. But before they could make it, the bull slipped into the thick timber and disappeared. Shortly after, the night sky replaced the bright colors of the sunset, and that concluded the first day of the hunt. Early that morning, we found a good-sized bull, but once again, it was right on the border of being big enough to shoot. The hunter decided not to shoot it because it was still pretty early in the hunt and he was holding out for a monster. He might have made a good decision because later that morning, we found a much bigger bull, but there was a problem. The elk we're after crossed over into the wrong canyon, so we're gonna hop on our horses Try to get around him and push him back this way towards the hunters. We gotta get on our ponies and start flying that way. We rode the horses as far as we could, but eventually it was faster to hike through the thick timber. They're running downhill. Let's see if I can get around him. <laughs> there we go. I seen a couple cows and a, or a couple spikes and a cow. After about another 20 minutes of hiking, I jumped the elk again. All right, there goes that big bull. <laughs> there they go through the trees. You can see them. They're heading right the right direction. Let's go. That big bull is right there. Nice. Holy cow. That was so perfect. Let's go, baby. Hopefully we hear a gunshot here soon. So awesome. Let's go. Okay, so we chased these elk out of here. And hopefully they wrapped around here and went towards the hunter. If not, they came straight down my way. I just heard some gunshots over there. Hopefully that was our hunter. Well, it wasn't our hunter. The gunshots came from somebody else. Because we're hunting on public land, we're competing against other hunters for the same bulls. The next day and a half, we decided to hunt a different mountain with less competition. Nothing too notable happened, and we didn't have much luck. So we decided to head back to camp and hunt our original spot again. A lot of people have been requesting to see what kind of gear and tack, saddles, and all that kind of stuff we use. Well, here's a little look at some of the bedrolls we use when we're packing. 
So this bedroll is called a canvas cutter. It's a modern day cowboy bedroll that works like a one man tent. It has poles that go over your face, the canvas is waterproof, and it comes with a memory foam pad. And that's only a few of the awesome features it has. There's so many different models and accessories to pick from. For example, the Summit Roll is made out of nylon, so it's extremely lightweight. And it's convenient to hike with or tie on the back of my saddle. Lately, I've been stacking them on the top of my pack to double as a manier cover for the load. And I've stacked them three or four high. It's also convenient to keep in the back of your truck for overnight trips. Let's face it, YouTube hates fun. And my hunting videos are always getting demonetized. But I reached out to Canvas Cutter and I set up a deal that if you guys order a canvas cutter online and use the promo code MULE at checkout, it'll save you 10% off the original price. Every purchase will support my channel, so it's a win-win. You get an amazing product at a discount, and I get to keep making videos. Alright, we got the pack mule loaded up for hopefully the last time heading up the hill. Hopefully on the way down, we got some meat in the panniards. The trail we chose was beautiful but unfamiliar and before long it turned nasty and we lost the trail. It looks like on the map the best place to do it is right here because we'll get ledged off too high. Right and here? Yeah. Let's try this. Yeah the pines look pretty thick through here but this is the fastest way to the trail. I'll just take a quick look through here. To say the least, the situation was pretty dang stressful. The last thing we wanted was to get ledged in and stranded in the dark. We also didn't want to miss out on the evening hunt, so we had to find a way out of the canyon and find it fast. There's a trail right here. It's not cut out great, but there is a trail. As the bird flies, we're 220 yards away from the main trail. Well, pack survived. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I know, right? Tied on pretty good, then. How's all the horses looking? Pretty good, a little cut up, but not bad. Yeah, let's get on, let's go down and hunt. We've got good hunting down the camp now. Okay. 15 minutes down the trail and right outside of camp, we ran into a herd of elk. We don't want him. The herd bull was small, so the hunter passed on it. But don't get me wrong, this was an awesome way to end a stressful evening. The next morning, we woke up to bad news. The hunter had something come up and he had to catch a flight home tomorrow. So the hunt was cut short and today was the last day. Later that morning, we could hear several bulls in the trees below us. They were so close, but they wouldn't step out of the tree line. So, we sat above them, waiting all day for them to come out. As the evening approached, I split up from Lynn and his hunter. While they waited at the same spot, I looked for other bulls. The day was almost over and I could feel my disappointment starting. But then, I heard the one sound that could change that. I rushed back to the group as fast as I could. Get him. 
shoot him right, right in the back if you have to. And oh man, look at them fronts. Gosh, he's busted there, Gary. But that's why when I very first seen that side, I thought, he's only a 320 bull. Then I said, no, he's busted. When I seen this, I said, shoot that bull, because I knew who he was. <laughs> I'm going to show you his trail cam pictures. They're awesome. <laughs> well, Gary, what do you think? Oh, yeah, we'll tag him for you. Later. I think it was awesome, buddy. We waited to the last hour of the last day. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I, I really wish we had. Uh, I really wish we had a video of the kill, watching the bull go back and that forth across, me. gathering the cow uh, well, up. And, we thought uh, he was gone. He I thought was he was gone. gone and but, the cow turned. He came back, and he followed the cow yeah. back. One one thousand. Boom. He was down. He could not have stopped. That, that was the only place he could stop and get shot. Really. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got her done tonight just in time these guys are taking a flight in the morning so we're gonna get it all caped out and quartered tonight and then we're gonna come in with the horses in the morning and pack her out so we'll see you then we made it up here we're gonna start loading the pack mule up we got the horns up by old buck up there what do you say it's gonna be fun so nothing goes wrong knock on wood Well, Red, what do you think about all this, huh? Now, if we could tie, you got more twine? Tie it like my calf at the rodeo. There you go. Hey, man, you've tied some hills before. <laughs> Red, you're doing good. The pack out went great. We got the bull home and delivered it to the hunters. Now, you may be thinking that this is where the story ends, but it's not, trust me, it gets better. It was time for the cows to come off the mountain. So, the next few days I started gathering beef. Meanwhile, Lynn was still hunting elk, this time with a different hunter. And I got a call from him saying that they had shot a bull and needed my help to pack it out. So today's Monday, we packed out the last bull on Thursday, and we're ready to go right back up there and pack out this one. This one's supposed to be a little bigger, so we're back up in the mountains. Brody, what do you gotta say? Well, they called him the real cowboy to get it done, so I mean, that's why me and Zach are here, but uh, you'll see. I guess let's go take a look. Let's hop on our donkeys and head up the hill. <laughs> All right, we're heading up the trail. We should be up to the elk in probably another 45 minutes, don't you think? We can see the horses right up there though, so I bet that's right where they got the elk. Pretty close up there anyways. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah! Yeah, we made her. Dang! Oh my gosh! That's our target pool. Holy cow! Damn. Now. Gosh, this is a workout just holding it. <laughs> yeah. Big boy. There you go. And that has been our target bull. Whoa. That's him. Yeah. You can see he's just massive. Help him lift the hold on. One, two, three. A little bigger than the last one, huh, Buck? We got our pack loaded up, meat in the back of old red, horns on old Buck. Let's get out of here, huh?
Look at all this food right here. We're gonna get these pack saddles unloaded and uh, get this meat to the shop. This here's probably an eight and a half year old bull. And that there's a four and a half year old bull. Wow. Difference in their ivories. Later that night, we scored the bull at 358 and 5 eighths. For the public unit we're on, this guy is an absolute stud. Congrats to Gary and Steve on both getting awesome bulls. I can honestly say these were some of the greatest hunts I've ever been on. I also want to give a big shout out to Lynn for letting me tag along and bring my camera. Now, there's one more hunt I want to share with you guys, but I can't fit it into this video. And let's just say it's because we got into a few wrecks. Make sure you subscribe because it's gonna be an awesome video and you don't wanna miss it. Don't forget to use code MULE to save 10% on canvas cutters.